Hello, welcome to a lesson on the triangle sum theorem. The diagram at left shows a basic triangle with the interior angles marked. The triangle sum theorem um, lets us know, pardon the scrolling, lets us know that uh, the measure of the angles in this diagram here, measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C, all of the interior angles, will always be equal to 180 in a triangle. So let's try to examine why this is true. And we can use the ideas from parallelism that we did before. So in the diagram at right, what you can see is a triangle where the base is parallel to this line drawn at the top. So what you need to use in your imagination is when we talked in the previous lessons about parallel lines and transversals, okay? Think of all the relationships that existed there. So if you extend out the sides of the triangle, it's probably fairly easy to see that if we think about this line going indefinitely like that, that angle one is um, an alternate interior angle to angle four. Can you kind of envision that? It's kind of like if you look at our diagram on the right there, far right, this angle here would be equivalent to this angle here because they're both alternate interior angles. So we can conclude that the measure of angle one is the same as measure angle four. We also can conclude by looking at a secondary transversal. If you imagine this other side of this triangle being extended out as a line, thinking about that as a line, that we have another alternate interior angle, angle two, uh, being the same as angle five. Okay, that would be um, if we had another triangle. Uh, well, that's not quite a triangle, but another transversal. You would have the relationship of these two being the same there. Okay, so it's, it's kind of like a set of parallel lines with two transversals. So what does that mean for us? Well, let's go back for a moment and just take a look at the clean picture. It means that angle one is the same as angle four. And it means that angle two is the same as angle five in measure. Now, the last thing to notice is that when we've arranged it like this, angles four, three, and five all together, uh, not a linear pair, but they are on a straight line. So they're a, they're, they're a set of three angles that add up to 180 degrees. So the conclusion is angle four, three, and five add up to 180. Thus, angles one, two, three add up to 180 because of the relationship one being the same as four and two being the same as five. Okay, that's kind of an informal proof of this theorem. Let's see it in practical use with a couple examples. Our first example at the left there, we have a triangle with measures uh, 26, 33, and then one unknown measure. We could conclude that the measure of these three angles must be 180 degrees. So we know 26 degrees plus 33 degrees plus whatever the measure of angle one is needs to add up to 180 degrees. Well, if we figure out the sum of those two together, 26 plus 33 would be 59 degrees plus the measure of angle one is 180 degrees. So to figure out what's left, figure out the, the measure of angle one, we can just subtract 59 from 180, which I believe would be 121 degrees. And you can check that on your calculator as well. Uh, a second example um, to the right here, we have an isosceles triangle. Um, or uh, it looks to be isosceles because the two angles at the bottom are marked equivalent. Um, we'll talk about maybe isosceles triangles more later, but definitely these markings indicate the angles are equal in measure. So this one also must be 47 degrees using the marking system. And then we can subtract that from 180 to figure out the measure of angle one. So 47 and 47 add up to, let's see, 94 degrees. Okay, if we take 180 degrees, the total angle sum, and subtract 94 degrees, we're going to figure out that, let's see what we have here, 17 subtract 9, 86 degrees. So the answer to our missing angle, the measure of angle 1, is 86 degrees. Um, this third example to the right shows a right triangle. So it just has the, the marking there. We would know that's 90 degrees. So then we could realize that the measure of angle one must be 70 degrees. And you can check that out later to see that 90 and 20 and 70 have a sum of 180. Okay, let's take a look at... Um, this is overall view here. And overall, we can use this triangle sum theorem to think about um, the missing angle on any triangle, even when the diagram gets more or less complex. 